Hello and welcome to another episode of Revlog. Andy here. Um, sorry for a slight delay. I uh, I had some personal reasons, so um, you know the uploads are far and few in between. But you know I always said uh, I'm doing this for fun. Uh, I don't want to be one of those YouTubers that have to pump out uh, certain contents per timeline. Um, I uh, yeah. Um, I don't again. I don't want to make it a have to do thing. Uh, it's something that I want to do. Um, so sorry for those of you who are waiting for regular updates, but that's kind of how I, you know, take this channel. Um, anyhow, uh, what I have for you today is a 2021 Hyundai Elantra, the SE, the absolute cheapest uh, rental car special trim, actually. Um, I think this car actually has uh, a few delightful things that, uh, that I want to take you on a ride for and show you. So let's go for a ride and see what this car has to offer. The 2021 Elantra boasts Hyundai's new parametric design language. In English, that means they tried making the surfaces look faceted like a jewelry. These facets, oftentimes a triangle in shape, have been controversial to say the least. I personally like the unique look, but will also agree that it's not exactly timeless. Not certainly with these measly 15 inch base wheels anyhow. Going around the back, you can see that they were going for a more fastback shape. I do wish they gave us an actual hatch opening versus the trunk. Um, and following the trend of today, the taillights are connected to accentuate the width of the vehicle. And all these facets and sharp edges. It makes me think if Lamborghini made an affordable vehicle, it would kind of resemble this. It even has Lambo pointy mirrors. Um, it doesn't quite have the Lambo quality though, as my tester had some fitment issues on the door trim. Overall, it's a bold design that have you saying, I love it or I hate it. And in the design world, that is much better than a lukewarm vanilla ice cream that no one remembers. The interior to me is the star of the show. The most notable feature is that this sub $20,000 car comes with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard equipment. The partition that divides the passenger and the driver isn't constricting like the one you find in the Jaguar F-Type as it's placed much lower in the cabin. There are good considerations for different beverages, but it fails the American Gatorade test. I really dislike the hard touch points where your knees and elbows come in contact with, and this meaningless earpiece that houses the driving mode button on the higher trim. I really don't like it. I do like how the unnecessary buttons and switch gears are hidden, especially in the mirror and the AC vents. Um, and the back seat with the driver's seat set to my comfort at 6'1 feels pretty comfy. You know, right off the bat, um, something really interesting. This car rides insanely stiff for what, um, you know, how a, an Elantra driver would use the car for, I think. Um, when I first saw the car, uh, you know, this basic trim is equipped with uh, 15 inch wheels and very narrow tires, right? So uh, you see a tire wall about that thick and you think, okay, this car is gonna be like a cushy ride, right? Um, almost like basically every other econo box. Um, and to be honest, it's almost shocking how stiff this car is. Uh, for sure, in comparison to the competition like the Civic and the Corolla, this is the stiffest riding car. Um, and, and it does, you know, we're coming up to a little gap here. It, it does ride quite busy. Uh, so that's something to take note. Uh, now, having said that, the, the pros of the compromise of having a slightly stiffer car uh, is that you get actually really good uh, vehicle dynamic feel. Um, this is 
one of the cars, especially in the Econo segment, that offers you plenty of feel, actually. Normally, I'd, I'm not a big fan of stiff cars because um, I think good suspensions aren't necessarily always stiff. Um, but especially the steering feel, I, I'm actually quite surprised how good this car is with the Econo tires. Um, and yeah, just the, the general purpose of this car, um, especially if you are to put it in uh, a sport mode, I mean, this car actually um, gives you one of the best steering feel of any newer electric uh, rack steering I've driven recently. Oof, man, rides pretty rough, I gotta say, in some, some spots. It, it does better with larger bumps. You know, when a lot of people talk about uh, interior of a car, they always talk about quantifiable things, right? Because it's not... Most, uh, most likely it's not an opinion, it's a measurable thing. So they always talk about, you know, material quality. But to me, what's more important are form factors. Um, and this cocoon wraparound like cockpit uh, is actually very interesting, um, especially again in this segment, um, uh, versus the likes of the Corollas and the, the, the Civics. Um, I think the Mazda is actually certainly quite interesting. Um, see what it does in this kind of turn here. Oops, <laughs> I'll shift it a bit. Only the, only the real end gives you the pull to off shift. Come on, Hyundai. Um, I feel like Mazda is the only uh, everyday average car that gets this correct. Hey. A little bit of a squeal, but you know, nothing crazy. I, I'm surprised at how well the understeer is controlled in this car. Uh, the, overall, this car feels really nice and low. Um, again, you, you're probably seeing this, you know, come through the video. It does ride a little bit busier, um, but the, the overall vehicle dynamics is actually really fun. Um, not to mention this dashboard, the height, is so low and you get this really long a pillar with uh, a huge windshield the visibility out forward is excellent um it almost dare i say it almost feels like a mid-engine car um kind of like an nsx in a way because the dashboard is so low um yeah i mean it's a very pleasurable you know interior design i um, I, I think the intent is a very sporty vehicle, right? Uh, a lot of the Hyundais, especially the center armrest, is so high relative to the, the shift knob position. But this car, you know, it's almost like a, a BMW in this regard, uh, how everything is just in line. And it just helps you focus on the overall drive. Um, I, I really like that. I. You know, not every condo box has to be super boring. And what I also really like about this car is the lane keep or lane follow assist is defaulted to off. And you actually activate it with the steering. So once it detects, okay, it's blinking, it's looking for it. Now it's green. Um, the on center, the way it follows the lanes, I think Hyundai is actually one of the best in terms of active safety. Um, a lot of the cars that are kind of new to this always tends to lean onto the one side. Um, so yeah, I really like that. Uh, you can always turn it off. Um, unlike the BMW that's defaulted it you know, they defaulted it to being it on first and you have to turn it off every single time. And it gets kind of annoying when you just want to drive the car, right? It's, um, and normally cars that have lane keep assist, uh, they have terrible steering feel. Everything just feels kind of like a game. Um, but the electric steering in this Elantra is actually really nice. Um, again, I'm shocked at how much feel, steering feel you get in this car. Um, do I wish it rides a little bit softer? Yes. Uh, even for someone like me that goes to the track, I, 
I think for a daily grind, th this could get a little bit uh, annoying. Um, but again, the, the trade-off is that it, um, it is a more engaging, fun-to-drive car. And Hyundai has this new uh, IVT, essentially a, a CVT um, transmission. On the regular variants, you have to step up to the end line to get a, a DCT or a manual transmission. And I'm gonna show you, go into sport, uh, drop the gear, floor it. And it actually mimics the gear ratios quite well. Um, you know, it's not like a, a velvety DCT where it blips down shifts and farts and crackles. Um, but certainly for a for an everyday drive, I mean, it's not bad. Um, normally, I hate the the CVTs that have that rubber bandy feel. Um, so, all it's always the takeoff here. Let's check this out. I mean, that got me up to 40 miles per hour. Very, very peppy. Um, I would say one of it's one of the best CVTs that I've driven recently. Um, unlike the I know Toyota had some interesting design where the first gear is a conventional gear uh, and it, the rest of the gears were uh, made it to the CVT. And I had a lot of hopes for that. And when I did actually drive that car, I was a little underwhelmed. But if you want to know my overall impressions of the competitor to this car, the Toyota Corolla, uh, check it out on the link above. And yeah, when it comes to the dead stop, um, this car is equipped with the auto start and stop. When it turns off, it's very smooth. Uh, when it comes back on alive, it, it is a little rough, but you know, it's a four cylinder uh, Econo car. Um, so there's that. I think in terms of the balance, uh, the Civic still, to me, is the right balance of comfort and just uh, sporty enough. I think this car is maybe a little bit more harsh. Um, the Corolla is more of a soft, spongy car. So um, overall dynamics, Civic first, uh, Launcher second, and Corolla for me. Let's gun it again. I mean, okay, that was 40 again. This car in I think what it has the mid hundreds horsepower. I mean, it's just shockingly pretty fun. Um, it's uh, it's pretty peppy, um, and I know Hyundai's had some issues with their GDI engine, uh, and that is why you don't get direct injection anymore. This car is only multi. Uh, this car is only multi port injection, um, but the the fact of the matter is, it's actually in the middle of the park in terms of the overall horsepower, uh, Civic being the fastest, and. You know, to me, okay, direct injection is great and all, especially for fuel economy and performance. Uh, but this thing, my wife's been commuting in this in the LA's, you know, stop and go traffic. And she comes back averaging 38 miles to the gallon, regular gas. Um, it doesn't have the, the tick, tick, tick of the direct injection. So it, it drives much quieter. And in terms of the overall performance, the, the horsepower is actually in the middle of the park. So can't really complain, you know, it, it doesn't feel like a turd. So yeah, plenty of pep for daily commutes. If the base of the base of the base trim is this much fun, uh, I can't wait until I drive the real end variant, uh, even or even the end, end line for, for that fact of the matter. This car is genuinely fun. So it's been a few days since driving the Elantra and I've had the chance to collect my thoughts. Bottom line, if you come across a fantastic lease deal, it would be a delightful daily. Otherwise, some of the Japanese competitors that keep its value better, most notably the Honda Civic, is a slightly more refined product that balances the sportiness and comfort better, not to mention the practicality of a hatchback platform. I find it more interesting to drive than the base Corolla, but the ride is pretty firm. If you're looking for a frugal, fun vehicle, the Elantra SE is a compelling choice you should consider. Thanks for staying till the end of the video, and I'll see you in the next one.